hello friends welcome back to our channel mirror neuron which means watch and learn and today we are going to solve the daily coding challenge 6 which we were calling it as confused sum so I will share the problem uh, URL uh, in the description section of this video hence I will not going to dive too much into repeating the question all right so the problem statement uh, was looking for a solution where you will be given an array array like this and it will have 10 zeros so you can consider this as a list okay and the second parameters that you will get is uh, a kind you can say uh, two inputs so one will be the n which is 10 in this case and imagine uh, it can be uh, more than 10 values and the limit could be 10 to the power 7 or 10 to the power 8 such as zeros okay but in this case currently we are targeting only 10 values which we can see from here and the second thing is will be the Q and the Q will be uh, in this particular example say we have a, a uh, 2d matrix and it will the first two values will be the index position say it will be something like this and the a third value is the value that you are going to add it there okay so let me identify them clearly so that it is easy to understand so 1 and 3 in this case are the index position so I know Python starts from 0 but I, in this particular case consider them as the first position and the third position so this will be this and the value that you're going to put is 4 and similarly say you have 3 5 and then say you have uh, say 6 as a new value that you are supposed to add and uh, let me take another value which is say 2 comma 5 again and the value is say 3 okay so these are the three operations so depending on the number of values here here there are total three which is one two and three values in this list so the length of uh, Q is three so that means you are going to run the operation three times so what will happen if I you know take this as the first input then in that case my array would be transformed like this so I know that one and three so one and remember one and three are also included and that's why our programming syntax will slightly change which I'm going to show you today so 1 and 3 will be 4 so 4 4 4 so basically 1 2 3 4 and the remaining will be 0 3 and 6 okay 10 okay now moving on to the second array my new array this particular array will be now updated and I know that my index position 3 and 5 which is this and this including this one will be now added 6 as a value so if you realize 3 is overlapping in both cases so it will be 4 4 and then 4 plus 6 is 10 and then what I have 3 4 5 then I have 6 6 and then 5 more zeros right yeah and then I remain with the third step and the third step what it will do it in the position of index 2 through 2 5 that means 2 3 4 5 4 values will be added 3 so let me start with my duster here <laughs> uh, so 2 will be uh, 4 plus 3 7 so this will be now 7 then 10 plus 3 will be 13 so this will be 13 and then 6 plus 3 will be 9 so this will be 9 and the fourth one so remember 2 3 4 fifth index position 6 plus 3 will be again 9 so this is 9 and then finally what you're supposed to return is whatever is the maximum value of this particular list and in this case we can humanly see that it is 13 and that is what your function is supposed to return now let's quickly see how we can write a you know python code around it okay so what we can do is um, very simple 
sorry uh, what we are going to do is we're going to write a function diff you can give it any name for the timing let's say we are calling it as confused sum you'll get two parameters one is the n which is the number of elements or number of zeros that you are supposed to start with in the list and then you will have the key q which will give you the parameters okay and as we have just seen how q looks like so q would look like something like this okay I highlight them in yellow q looks like this 2d array okay all right so i know how to access q so quickly uh, you know your q as you have seen that it looks like something like a 2d array right so what I can do is I can access this individual uh, lists here and then also I can access the individual elements of those lists right and I think you should be familiar with that how to do that so given an example what we are going to do is I'm going to because there are three lists in my queue so what I'm going to do is I'm going to run a for loop uh, which will have uh, which will run three times right so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say for I in Q right so what it is going to do is for I in Q I is going to first pick this list right and once I have this list I know that the value of this uh, list can be accessed uh, so I now will be this list which will have three values say one three and two so 2 is my value that needs to be added, 1 and 3 are the index position and I can access individual values like this. So i0 is, is equal to 1, i1 is, is equal to 3 and i2 is, is equal to 2. Remember these are the python indexes and in the problem statement we are talking about physical position number. Okay. Now for that case what I have to do, first i this particular i will circle you know all these three lists one at a time now when i'm having when i got the when i sorry when i got the first list through i now i'm going to access this for that i need another for loop and i can call it as for j right in now in order to access these values right I need to do is because remember I need to um, just let me take a quick example here so my list would look something like this say 1 comma 5 comma 2 so that means I need to have access to 1 2 3 fourth and the fifth position values because in those fifth position values how did I get to 1 to 5 because of these two values right and I need to add in these positions. Right now the array has values 0, 0, 0. So I need to add these values 2 in the position wherever there are zeros. Okay. All right. So let me quickly clear this. Ah, nice to watch. <laughs> okay. So for J in, that's why I need to write a range because I need to get the range of those values, not just the individual 1 and 3. I need to get the range. So that's why in the range I will pass. I just clear this so that you can see it properly okay so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pass i0 and i1 plus 1 why is this an additional one here because I need to include both these values otherwise we remember if we have a range function say 2 comma 6 the values it will return is 2, 3, 4 and 5 not the 6th one because that's how this uh, range function works so that's why you have to increment it by 1 so that I can also get the 6th value that is why I'm adding a 1 here hope that clarifies right now once this is done now the question comes how do I access those values within the array so that I can fill those values with my third uh, index which is i i of 2 right so in order to access that what we are going to do is we are going to take the array right and we are going to just pass j minus 1 why j minus 1 the same logic because whatever range we are given in our 
array so which is say 1 5 2 I need to also include this value and remember because Python starts from 0 it is index position but in this particular problem statement we are talking about physical position numbers not from a Python perspective though that's why we start with 1 2 and 3 and in order to be able to use Python indexing we have to minus 1 that's it that's the simple logic and equal to i of 2 so this way what it is going to do is here it is going to uh, fill the values for all the array positions and finally what you are going to do is you are going to simply return oops not in this position here in align to this return the max of array and that's it I mean that's all it was supposed to do in this particular problem statement now if you also realize this is a very toned down problem statement that I have shared okay in more aggressive interview question what they are going to do is they are going to give you not a small list like this but a array which is very large and that could have around 10 to the power 8 elements okay and your Q will also be maybe a you know thousand times matrix a very large uh, you know matrix now if you follow this particular coding practice in that particular case in the new case what will happen is you'll enter something called as time complexity okay and what does that mean is even though you're logically this will work but it will fail if it doesn't run within a certain uh, time constraint that means your say your time constraint may be only 500 millisecond in, in the 500 millisecond your entire script should run why is this important in programming world is because just imagine you are using Google Maps right and you are driving and you took a wrong turn right if Google Maps takes say you know two minutes to tell you the alternate route just imagine the problem it will happen and that is not just one problem it's, and like you there are maybe millions of drivers running around and even if it is delayed by a minute just imagine everybody will be probably taking a wrong turns right and it will not be able to tell you the correct one at the right moment so that is why time constraint is very important now that is itself a big lecture okay and that is why I highly recommend one course which is called as analyzing complexity I'll you know that's a very interesting course uh, in Coursera I'll put the description uh, link in the description section that teaches you about all these uh, possibilities and challenges and how to solve this kind of problem and these are very commonly asked question in uh, you know any data science or machine learning interviews as well as in the you know, online assessment portals so make sure you do you know learn this particular thing you know time complexity also sometimes they are called as O notation it talks about the complexity in terms of numbers that how many instruction it is going to do and all those things if you are not from a computer science background like I am not from a computer science background I have a master's degree in electrical engineering for me initially these things were a bit cumbersome excuse me you know I had to take some time to learn it and this particular course from the Coursera has actually helped me uh, in order to you know get the concept around it and so on if you are from computer science background you are already familiar with this and I'm pretty sure you must have already solved this problem and have saw this coming but uh, if you are not then you know just click the link below and take this course it hardly takes a week to complete this course so alright so I hope you learned something new today uh, if you really like our channel please do subscribe and share it with your friends and colleagues and if you have any suggestion please do let us know so that we can make it better Till then, you have a great day and take care. Until then, I will share more problem statements for you to practice. You take care. This is the code and uh, what we're going to do is just return. Don't mind my you know, puppies are walking around on the top. <laughs> just kidding. Okay, so. Alright, so 
this is my function and I'm going to run it and in the meanwhile what we can do is we can also add um, a code cell in Google Colab I'm using my iPad which is which works completely fine the only problem is um, it doesn't uh, give you the option to type uh, unless you're using a you know proper keyboard uh, type in the sense comfortably type <laughs> okay so what I'm going to pass now is at this point I'm just going to pass 10 because that's what the example we took and we're going to pass a uh, 2d matrix and the values I can pass is 1 comma 5 comma 3 and the second list is I can of course pass only two lists just for the verification purpose but still because I demonstrated with three lists let's pass on uh, three lists as a parameter okay and the third list is uh, you can pick any values uh, any index position just make sure they're within the range and I'm going to say pass three comma six comma six and let's see what result i'm expecting 14 but let's see yeah it's 14 because i've already checked it but this is how it's supposed to work but the only problem that you will face if you have um a huge uh, you know instead of n as 14 if i say pass a big number maybe this time it will work but let's check it out say if i have a very big number Yeah, right now this might still work but then if your Q is a uh, large one uh, see it will still be 14 because I haven't changed the Q parameter here uh, even if I increase you know uh, the list of list as a hundred list of such list but then it might still work but then just imagine if my Q is also in the range of millions then this particular problem will arise because of this summation here hence this logic will uh, probably fail uh, because of that reason okay and as you have seen there are two issues that you will run into one is the uh, time complexity and the second problem statement that you will run into is the right so I hope you have got something interesting to learn today uh, check the description section for more information and I hope uh, you'll continue practicing the daily coding challenge till then you take care and I'll talk to you soon